we'll get underway here. First thing, though, Ross, I wanted to ask you a question. I hear um, from all kinds of sources that you're the man of a thousand voices. What's your favorite impression right now? Thank you. I, I, th- I think uh, Matthew McConaughey's my old goal, too. Um, but I, I'd love doing, like, Harrison Ford and Michael Caine and, uh, um, I mean, Jeff Bridges recently has been a lot of fun. I just, I don't know, I like I like – doing a lot of people that people don't know as well. So that's probably not useful for our purposes because people will be like, who's that? But I like, I like uh, finding obscure British actors and, and trying to emulate them, you know? So. Yeah. That's great. Can you give me a little Jeff Bridges? Uh, yeah, man. You know, this whole pandemic thing, man, it's a trip, man. It's a, it's a veritable, uh, you know, it's a thing, man. You know, it's a whole thing, you know? I don't know. That's (laughs) That's great. Thanks. That's great. Well, let's see. Let's go ahead and get started with the, with the Q and A. Um, Sam, do we have somebody queued up and ready yeah. to go? So I brought in Elizabeth. She just needs to turn on her camera. Hmm. Oh, okay. Hang on. Oh. It's at the bottom there, Elizabeth, if you there go we down. Go. <laughs> oh. Hey, I know you. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing well. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Oh, oh and Laura's down here, too. Okay, cool. Got some other people queuing up. Great. So, what are you doing to keep yourself entertained? Uh, I, honestly, I'm I'm reading a lot. I'm trying to work on my home. I I've just been doing a lot of home repairs. I was spending a good portion of the day in the attic last night <laughs> trying to clean up stuff and under the house a little bit yesterday. Um, I'm just trying to like fill my because I'm really overwhelmed. But I'm sure a lot of people are too with all this going on, and I'm you know pretty anxious so i'm trying to like find things to do that i can physically work on so that my mind doesn't go crazy you know but uh um yeah that's basically what i'm doing what are you doing uh, very similar i get to work from home a little bit and that has helped get some normalcy um but yeah the loneliness and boredom is it's real it's a real thing yeah real thing watching a lot of netflix Yes, and Hulu and other things. Prodigal Son, my God, did you see the season finale? No, no, I have not. Holy crap. <laughs> I really hope you can be on that show at some point. It's, it's really good. Yeah, no, I've, I, I, I know. I've, I've seen a little bit of it, but, but, you know, big surprise. Like, Tom's crushing it, you know, so um, it's, it's great. Like, Do you know uh, when you're going to start filming again? No idea. No uh. idea. Okay. They, you know, we usually go back late April, but that's of course been postponed. So um, I, I don't know. Your, your guess is good as good as mine. I mean, okay. But I think as, as Georgia, Georgia's lightening the restrictions right now, so it could be in the next month or two. But we really don't know. So we just want to make sure everyone's safe before we go back to work. Yeah. Please be safe. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, Ross. Bye. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, Laura. Go ahead with your question. Okay. Hi. Hey, Laura. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. Hi. Nice to see you. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah, getting there. But um, yeah, the question I wanted to ask was um, if you how so we know like Aaron's been shaped by everything that he's lost and everything that he's been through when we see him in season 10. How do you envision Aaron as a character if he'd met Rick's group earlier, like Atlanta, Rick, prison time? Oh, that's a great question. I think, I think his, his uh, tr- transition to a more darker, more assertive character probably would have come a lot sooner. Mm. Um, I think Rick and the gang have just been through so much more before they got to Alexandria. Um, yeah. You know, when, when Aaron meets them, you know, he's killed some people, obviously, and he's seen some violence for sure, but he, not to the extent that Rick and, and the rest of the gang have, have seen. Um, yeah. So, so I really feel like that, that version of Aaron would, would have been. Lot sooner. More, yeah. He probably would have lost his arm and gotten a, battle mace a lot sooner you know but, <laughs> because um, i just wonder like how he would have been like if 
if he'd been like that before Negan came along, like would he have had the same, the sort of same stance as Abraham did when he sort of rose like really up and was determined, like do you know what? Because I know Aaron rose up when Negan came to him. I noticed that he was sort of ready to die for these people who he didn't really know that well. Yeah. So I just wondered, like, do you like would it have changed maybe how he went about it with him? To, to have been a part of the group earlier? Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I, I definitely. I mean, because I, I think Aaron learned, Aaron and all the Alexandrians learned so much from Rick, even though I, I was talking uh, on set, you know, recently with Kenrick, you know, uh, Kenrick Martin. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, we're the last two Alexandrians left, really. Like, oh, yeah. Everyone has died. Um, <laughs> Which is kind of insane. Like the moment Rick and the gang showed up, that's when people just started. Everyone dying. started to die off. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, so I feel like while a great deal of destruction seemed to have come right when Rick and the gang showed up, um, I feel like the Alexandrians learned a lot about how to fight, uh, yeah. even though they were overwhelmed by the wolves and and the whispers and or not the whispers, but uh, uh, Negan and the Saviors, of course, many times in different waves. Um, yeah. They did. Uh, from from that experience so so that's good no that, yeah that makes a lot of sense then yeah. um i hope you're keeping well and all of this you too you yeah. keep busy um, good, good days and bad you know. huh i said there's good days and bad days you know I yeah i feel that. that that's that's why you will constantly just see me posting memes that seems to be my way of life now no, I just I <laughs> the memes. I love, I love seeing your memes <laughs> so <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Laura, so much for joining Hi. the call. Good to see you. Be well. Sarah. Oh, hey, Laura. Ross. How are you? Hey, Sarah. How you doing? I have a very important question for you. If you, okay. might, know, you might know what it is. Okay. Uh, just curious if you, uh, if you like the movie Shrek or not. It's literally my favorite movie. Really? That's interesting. Okay. That's all. I just what? wanted to say hi. And, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, that's about it. Well, okay. good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. Catherine, oh. you're up there. Hi. Hi, Ross. It's so hey. nice to see your face. And I see- love your Lake Powell t shirt. I was in Lake oh. I was at Lake Powell last May on a, a on a trip to Arizona. Oh nice. Hey, were you on one of the houseboats? No, but we did get to kayak um, on the lake, and it was the first time I was ever kayaking and and I was scared to death, but then I really liked it. So that's awesome. Yeah, I love, place. I love And we camped there for two nights. It's beautiful. Um, isn't it? <laughs> My question is, uh, what is the first role you played that got you hooked on being an actor? So I think I was seven or so. I was in a play for church um, and it was the, the pageant story about the birth of, of Jesus. And uh, I was like, townsperson number 12 something like that it was a very small role i had one line and i messed it up i didn't say it right um but it got a it must have been such a flub that it got a really good reaction from the audience because everyone just started howling and laughter um and from that moment i didn't know what it was or why i liked it so much but i was like oh this feels good and i'd like to recreate that feeling so um so yeah, I that was what hooked me, and ever since then, I've been chasing that high. Um, so to varying degrees of success, but yeah, that was that was the first time. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Take care of yourself. You too. You too. Bye. 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 Michael. Hey, Michael. Hey. How you doing, man? Good. How you doing? Good. Um, by the way, you were great with the Red Skull in Infinity War and Endgame. No Thank offense you. to the other guy who played him. What was the guy? What was the previous Prince Paul's name? I keep forgetting. Uh, uh, I forget the name, but he's got nothing on you. No offense. To yeah. You. Oh, thank you, Hugo Weaving. Uh, he, he, he's. Oh, that's that's the guy, Hugo Weaving. And you were also great as Ultron in the um, VR that I, that I completed that with my dad, and getting to hear you as Ultron was also great. Oh, you got to play it. Yeah, I did get to play it. Oh, that's awesome. That's I, it. Was it really a fun is. game. Got yeah. it. So my question is. How do you compare the first time you've seen a Marvel movie versus the first time you stepped onto the Infinity War set as the Red Skull? Oh, gee, I mean, I think the first Marvel movie, I mean, the, the, the one that everyone thinks of, of course, is Iron Man. And that was such an exciting 
movie for all of us, I think, because um, it was for people who know the canon and know the story of Tony Stark. I think Robert Downey Jr. embodied that character so perfectly. Um, I don't I don't think I can't think of an, an actor that could have played that part better than than. Robert, honestly. Um, so that was fun to see that the MCU kind of unfold the way it did over those 24, 25 films or whatever it is, um, which is insane to think about over just, you know, a decade, you've got that many films. It's just amazing. And I'm excited to see where the, the stage four goes, but, um, uh, or phase four rather. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I can't even describe the feeling that I had when I got on that set because this was so much of my childhood and, and drawing Marvel comics and reading Marvel comics was, that was like all I did to get, get through those tough years when I was growing up. Um, so, so when I got the part, that was amazing. But when I finally stepped on the set and got to meet the Russo brothers and, and work with them, it was just, it was, it was amazing. Best, one of the best days of my life, honestly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you're well. Thanks. You too. Thanks. Oh, hey. Hi. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. I saw you from a distance in Tulsa, Oklahoma back in 2017. Oh, and I, re I regret not going up to your table. And I want to know, I know you're a very impressive impressionist. Do you do any impressions of your fellow Walking Dead castmates, either them as actors or them as characters? Like, I do you do Eugene? <laughs> yeah. I've tried to do Eugene. He's a tough, he's a tough one. Cause you know, every time I try to do it, it sort of just sounds a little bit like Billy Bob Thornton and that's not correct. That's not a yeah. accurate, uh, representation of his voice. Um, I did get finally, cause I, I, I'd done impressions of, of, uh, uh, Norman and Daryl for, for quite some time before I was even on the show. Oh, and we got to hear it. We got to hear it. Well, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. But this, this, this last season, um, Norman finally, you know, kind of confronted me and said, I keep hearing that you do the voices. Um, I want to, I want to, I want to hear it. And I was like, ah, oh, no, I, I can't. Cause you might not like it. And he, and he, uh, he, 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 you know, he kind of like pushed me into doing it and, uh, it worked, you know, I think he liked it. I hope he did, but you know, <laughs> Just out of respect for him, I don't. I don't want to do it on <laughs> an online source. Well, do you do anybody who's not on the show any longer, um, like, like Michael Rooker or or Michael oh, Cudlitz? You know, Rooker tried to get me. It's funny. Like Rooker had me do at the season six premiere. He tried to get me to do it on stage at the uh, Madison Square Garden, and he was actually squishing my face together to get me to get the the Rooker sound. But he's a tough one. Uh, I, I I've done a little bit of Negan. You know, just doing that, like, oh yeah, you bet, you bet your bottom dollar. You know, you gotta do the little hip dip. Do the hip dip, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get the bat in there, the gangster lady. Yeah, yeah. That swagger. Um, yeah, I, I, he's 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 a fun one to do because I think Jeffrey really loves to 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 you know fill mm -hmm. out that character completely. Like he's 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 so much fun to watch. He's such a charismatic yeah. character, you know. So. Uh, well, so, I, a little bit of Rick and Andy, but also yeah. out of respect to the big man, you know, I don't want to, I mean, he's, <laughs> he's so, he's so amazing. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Well, your John Malkovich is one of my favorites. Oh, thank you, Amy. I really, <laughs> really appreciate that. Thank you so <laughs> much. From, no, 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 uh, I, I can only do like elevating angry Malkovich, uh -huh. actually. I was watching yeah, a little I, bit of Rounders. Have you seen Rounders before? Yes, yes. So like that the end scene where he's talking to Matt Damon, he's like, pay this, pay that man his money. <laughs> I just that's like my favorite Malkovich line of all time. So Well, that's great. Well, I know when back in 2017 when you were in Oklahoma and Tulsa, there was a tornado that evening. Yeah. So I'm glad, glad you're okay. Glad you survived your Me your too. first that Oklahoma tornado. Movie. I saw that from the, the from way up high. I was mm -hmm. like, man. I thought that was going to tear through us. That was terrible. Oh, but, probably most of the Oklahomans were out, you know, yeah. watching it on their front porches. Yeah. It's kind of a pastime. I can understand why. It was beautiful. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, thank was, you, Ross. Thank you very much. I hope we get to meet you in person someday. Yes, next time. Promise. Thank you. Good. Hi. Thank you. How you Hi. doing? Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Are you holding up all right? Yeah, I'm hanging in there. Good. He's doing yard work. He walked in a 
the right time. Oh, yeah. good, good. Hope you're well. Hope you are too. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing my yard work myself. So, oh wait, what do you say? Doing yard. He can't hear because I have my headphones in. But oh, gotcha. Okay. Just like the Walking Dead. Okay, you need to. <laughs> you need to go. Uh, I'll see you later. <laughs> I yeah. can see you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hey. So my question is, uh, how do you also think being a father? Person. Oh, thank you. <laughs> how do you think being a father affects the decisions that Aaron makes, especially during the Whisperer War? <clears throat> I think it it's always in the back of his mind. You know, um, protecting Gracie is is, and not just Gracie, but the, the whole community, Alexandria, yes. Toppers, uh, the Kingdomers. Um, you know, he's always thinking about the next generation. And uh, I, I, th I think there's times where that probably um, can make him either a little bit more reckless or a little bit more conservative with his approach. Mm -hmm. But there's times where I feel like he gets very um, pragmatic about the need to go on the offensive with the Whispers because he wants to bring the fight to them, you know, a lot yeah. of times to give them the element of, give, uh, give the Alexandria the element of surprise. Um, but yeah, he's always contemplating, you know, what's the best way to protect Gracie and the, and the rest of the, the next generation, you know, so. Yeah, that's one of like my favorite things about him now that we get to see him be like a little more dark because I was like rooting for it in season eight and then it didn't happen. And then yeah. now we're in season 10 and I'm like, okay, we're here. So yeah. I'm really, I'm really like proud of everything you've been doing and I'm, <laughs> really enjoying it so thank you thank I'm, I'm here for it too I'm, I'm i'm excited to see a different side of aaron because i mean he's been such a good sweet guy for so many years mm -hmm. um but he's almost been too sweet i think for his own good yeah and, um it's nice to see him turning into a little bit of a, a darker character a little more yeah. pragmatic and assertive you know yeah thank you so much ross thank you it's good to see you good to see you too we're bye bye, okay, bye. Oh, hey! Hey! How, you hey. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. How are you guys? Doing well. As well as good as you can be when you're in quarantine. <laughs> yeah, we quarantine together. Yeah. Well, that's um, good. Yeah, yeah, we uh, got somebody around. <laughs> um, question. What has been your favorite episode to shoot so far? Oh, my gosh. Um, I, keep, I keep going back to uh, the one that Andy and I did. I think it was called Heart Still Beating, or I think it was called that. It was episode eight of season seven, I want to say. And uh, it was the one where Andy and I went out to go on a supply run uh, to get all those supplies for, for the Saviors. That was just great because um, it was such a wonderful opportunity to like really get to know Andy on a deeper level. We would worked together, obviously, uh, for several episodes, but that was like a standalone bottle mm -hmm. episode for the two of us. Um, and it was just great. It was it was so fun to, to to you know chat with him about life and you know his family and everything. It was it was such a crazy bucolic peaceful moment. So many times offset while all this death and destruction was around. <laughs> it was pretty wild. But I really liked um, the Whisperer battle this year too. Um, the, the the fight that we saw in the episode. The episode with Negan, I liked. Your episode um, with Nina. Oh, my, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we've had, I mean, that battle episode this year was was so beautifully shot and orchestrated, and uh, I, th I feel like we got some really great stuff. We were basically trying to emulate uh, the Battle of the Bastards to a large degree, and uh, I think we, we, you know, we did a good job of that, so it was, yeah. that was a lot of fun. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good to see good you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Dude, be well, okay? You too. You too. Bye. 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 Oh, hey, John. Hi. How are you um, doing? Doing good. I actually uh, met you in Columbus, Ohio, a few years oh, back. Five years ago. Yeah, I was uh, I was a, a volunteer and I worked your booth. Yes. I, oh my God, that's right. Yeah, five years ago. Yeah, and uh, but that was before Red Skull, and I'm a huge MCU fan. And when I saw you on screen as in Red Skull, I was so excited. Oh, <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's awesome. So with the multi-universe of madness coming up, what, what do you think we're going to, are we going to see Red Skull again? Oh, I, I have no idea. I can't, I, I really can't speak to that. I, I could, I, I don't, cause I don't know. Um, I hope he comes back because I feel like 
you know, as I've read in several interviews with the Russo brothers and the writers, um, they've talked about the notion that once the Soul Stone has been released in Infinity War, um, oh, everyone froze up. Are you guys there? Okay. Oh, I can see. Oh, cool. Um, once the Infinity War or once the uh, Soul Stone got released to uh, Thanos in the first movie, um, there is a timeline where Red Skull is free and he can fly now. He can probably breathe in space. So he could probably get back to Earth if he had a vendetta still, um, a bone to pick with, with Captain America. Or he could want to do something else entirely. He might just want to venture around the cosmos. But there is a virgin, a virgin, a virgin of him that is flying around. He's, he's totally free of the soul stone. So, I mean, there's, there's all these different multiverses that exist now, right? And I think it would be really fascinating to explore what's happening with all of these different characters now that the stones have been returned. And I, I, I also thought it would be really interesting to make a standalone movie with Cap returning all of the stones, you know? Because, mm. like, when he jumps into the time machine at the end of Endgame, you know, he's gone for a second, and then he comes back as an old man. But I think it'd be really interesting to see what happens each time he returns those stones. Like that would be a fascinating movie in and of itself. I think, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Especially but I hope he does. with cap cap and red skull. I mean, he'd have to return the skull, the, the, the stone to red skull. And I've seen memes about that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, I mean, I, 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 I wonder if red skull even has the ambition anymore. The, 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 I don't know if they have any, you know, bad blood anymore. Cap probably does, but I think Red Skull is cursed with infinite knowledge, so he might not care about revenge at all, you know? So that's a great question, yeah. I, ho I hope it comes back. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Man. What if? <laughs> what hey, if? Exactly. Great seeing you again. Good to see you too. Be well. Oh, oh hey. Hey, Sheila. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. How about you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, it's kind of like a two-part question, but do you think Aaron is going to tell Gracie that he's not her real father? Oh, I think he probably already has. Um, you know, I think the great, the, the thing I like most about um, Aaron and Gracie's, you know, relationship is that there's, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of um, uh, sugarcoating. You know, I don't think I don't think Aaron is trying to say things to Gracie just to make her feel better. I think she's very aware of the the threat outside and what's what could actually happen. Um, I think growing up in that world, you probably have to be taught early on about the real dangers of the world. And I would like to think that Aaron would be um, a good enough dad to not, you know, lie about certain things, especially like being his her father. Um, and I think. You know, uh, Gracie's a naturally inquisitive uh, person to begin with, so she would probably ask a lot of questions about, you know, where's, where's my mom, where da da, and then I yeah. think would, would naturally tell her, you know, just so you know, this is what actually happened. We save you from <laughs> some, some pretty bad situation. Um, might have might have killed your dad, uh, but he probably would have kept that out. I'd like to think he would have kept that part out because uh, that's not helpful, I think, to, to Gracie. But uh, yeah, I think I think there's 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 not a lot of secrets between the two of them. So that's a great question. And this, can I ask the second question? It's like a short one. Sure. What is it like working with the cast and um, all the special effects? Oh like, my gosh! Like well, first of all, what it ends up. Uh, yeah, I, the the cast is honestly, I think one of the best casts ever assembled for a TV show. I mean, it's 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 incredible the amount of um, dedication and hard work that all, all of the cast members put into the show day in, day out. You know, you're working 15 hours a day, most days. Um, and, and the crew is just, it's, it's literally the best crew I've ever worked with. Um, Greg Nicotero and his team at K and B, all the special effects, makeup people, they do such a good job. And, you know, when you look at some of these walkers up close, they look like real zombies, you know? So, um, it's hard not to be a little scared of them when you see them up close and, and personal. And what you see on the screen is exactly what we see. There's very little doctoring. And I think the practical effects that Greg and his team put into the show make the show that much better, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Good seeing you. Be, be well, okay? You too. Okay. 
Take care. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm getting zombie, zombie mommy. Hi. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Oh, I'm out to net. Sorry. <laughs> good to see you. Hi, uh, I met you actually a couple of years ago, back in 2017. Um, um, you sang, uh, you sang Carl Papa to my daughter. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Where are you coming from? This is a nice backdrop you got there. California backyard oh, in the by the pool. Nice. nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so my question to you is, uh, with the robotic arm and all, what kind of uh, device do you think Aaron would want to have come next um, this coming season? Well, I thought it would be fun to have like a Swiss Army arm. I think it's just a Swiss arm. What do they call it? A Swiss arm arm? Swiss Army arm? Or Swiss arm? Uh, <laughs> I kind of see to... Aaron as a flamethrower kind of guy. Oh, that would be cool. That'd be cool. It might be difficult to <laughs> get the yes. uh, But um, yeah, I, I, th I think it'd be cool to have like a bayonet attachment. Um, I certainly have been, uh, I've been asking Angela, our showrunner, for kind of a Wolverine attachment. I think that'd be cool. Um, but just that would be cool. <laughs> any sort of like extra like weapons attachment that could be affixed to there that could use in these situations because. You know, it's 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 such a cool apparatus, but like with when it's just the hand, it's just the hand. Of course, you can yeah. Jump. When it's the mace, it's awesome. But like, you know, I was saying earlier, like if you scratch your face at all, you're gonna be hurting yourself real bad. So, having different uh, attachments, I think, would be a really cool. What do you What do you think, though? I mean, I, I like the flamethrower idea, but what else you got? Kind of like the uh, gun, maybe gun attachment with the bayonet oh. attached. Yeah, <laughs> maybe a machine cool. gun. Damn. Okay, so kind of like uh, what was that uh, Grindhouse movie with? Oh yes, yeah. Actually, I was, that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah, Planetary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Heck yeah. That's what I was I'm, actually I'm, thinking I'm, of. I'm here for. It. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> season eleven, or at least season twelve. We'll see. Yeah. Oh yes, hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, good to see you again. Uh, you too. Hopefully, you're staying safe and maybe by a pool. <laughs> no, not for me, but but just trying to enjoy the fresh air and everything, you know, so. Well, stay safe, be careful, and have a good one. You too. I'll see you next time, okay? Okay, bye. Bye. Oh. Hey, Ross, do you want to take one more? I think we have time for one more if you've got yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Most definitely, most definitely. All right, let's grab somebody else here. And, uh, Donovan Harold, is that what you said? Oh. All right. Do we have somebody queued up there, Sam? Yes, we have someone who's going to turn their camera on. Federica. Federica? Federica, yeah. Hey. Hi. How are you doing? I'm My trying to find you. Friend. Yay. <laughs> Finally, I'm here. <laughs> Good to see you. Me too. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. How are you doing? I'm good. A little bit stressed by the by work, but I'm okay. Um, my question is: um, When you have to film, um, do you have any ritual before filming? Do you have any what? A ritual, something that you do before filming. Oh yeah. Um, oftentimes, you know, I, I kind of learned this from from Andy, uh, but I I used to do this a bit in college um, when I would have to get ready for a scene. I would do a lot of push-ups. Um, and I just kind of stopped doing it for a long time, probably just because I wasn't working on anything and I didn't, you know, have a reason to, to do, to, to stay that way. But, um, uh, I, I, I forgot how much it just like gets you out of your head and actually puts you in your body and, and makes you more present. So, you know, we would drop down and Andy would do it. Sometimes, uh, Stephen Young would do it too. And, just drop down and start doing 20, 30 pushups right before each take. And just the act of getting out of your, your head for a second, putting all of your energy into your body. Um, it sounds simple and kind of stupid, but like um, just doing pushups right before take will sometimes get okay. you, you cleared better than anything, you know? And, and, and of course we, we have a lot of screamers on the show. We have a lot of people who just like scream at the top of their lungs right before take to, I guess, kind of get themselves out of their head as well. So I don't, I don't okay. know if that'll work for you, but screaming and push-ups, Yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah. the theme. Of it, yeah. Okay. Okay. And yeah. I have another short question. Yeah. If, uh, 
Uh, how much of yourself, uh, of your behavior, do you put in our own characters? I put a, I put a fair amount. I mean, I, I don't want to put too much of him in there because I want to have some separation when I finish for the day and, and not not confuse my psyche uh, okay. too much by, by marrying too much of those personalities. Um, but I do put a fair amount in there because um, I need to, I need to connect to the character. Um, but uh, most of it's on the page, you know, I mean, I, I once I got the part, I called Scott Gimple um, and I just said, you know, how much do you want me to take from the comics? And he said, you know, Robert Kirkman has done a fantastic job of, you know, fleshing out all of these characters. Mm -hmm. So, Beg, borrow, and steal as much as you want, and please do take on the, the the broad strokes of the character as much as you can, because we want the the fans of the comics to really connect to this character right away, because he's such a um, iconic character from the comics. And when he comes out of the field, you know, and, and meets uh, Rick and Abraham, it's such a cool comic moment. Uh, so he, he he's like, I know fans are going to be looking forward to seeing him. Uh, so like, make sure that you have really infused as much of the comics into the character as possible while, while also making it your own. Okay. So, Thank you. Of course. Good to see you. I, I hope you're, hope you're well in Italy. Hope you too. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Oh, was that? Oh, did we got one more? Hey, Ross. Oh. Okay. I think we're I think we're just about at uh, at the time here. Oh, so okay. I don't know if you wanted to end with anything else, thank you for taking the time and spending some time with us and our fans today. We really appreciate it. No, thank you, and thank you for all the everyone that tuned in. Uh, you know, this is a really bizarre time, and a lot of a lot of uh, challenges are going to have to be met. And we're all going to have to come together and really help each other out. So um, I just want to say thank you to you, Ron, and, and to everybody who organized this and the, the Red Cross, um, please just help out as much as you can, whatever you can afford, um, donate to the Red Cross and donate to any organizations that are gonna help with, with uh, coronavirus relief because um, we're gonna need all the, all the help we can get, you know? So again, thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I wanna say thank you to our interpreters as well. Um, they've both been doing a wonderful job this whole time interpreting everybody's questions. Um, so thank you both. Uh, we know this is not a, an easy thing to do. And sometimes these questions come a million miles an hour and you just uh, power through them. So we appreciate it. They're amazing. They're good pros. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you. with that, Ross, we'll let you go. And we're going to start back up with our next guest here in a couple minutes. So All everybody right. who's hanging out there at the virtual microphone, uh, just hang tight. And as soon as our other guest gets on here, we will go ahead and get started. Uh, okay. It looks like our guest is- Get my best to Zach. I th yeah, think I he's think in here, Zach, if you can oh. turn, turn your camera on. Hey. hey. There we wow. go. I've in. finally been authorized. <laughs> Ross. What's up, man? Hi, Ross. How you doing? I miss you and your beard. Uh, it's right here waiting for you. Bring oh. it to Texas, Ross. Bring your beard to Texas. <laughs> Sweet shades. Thanks, man. Yeah. Well, I'll let you get to it. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, you're the best. Thanks yeah. for being such a sport. Oh, ah, yeah. Try, try. Well, enjoy you guys. Good to see Talk you. To you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, right, guys. Bye. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like, like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.